Hey, good morning, and welcome to my little treasure chest of a machine shop. <laughs> I have so much fun in here. I'm, I'm still dealing with file handles, and I'm making a uh, smaller series here of just uh, impeccable quality. <laughs> I'm going to get that done and it's it's getting done you know I it it, it <laughs> I do a lot of uh filing so that's going to be nice hey I'm going to get into some um things about uh, good machines and worn machines and, and things like that. And I've got, like in lathes, I have a lathe that is not worn. This one, it's just not worn. But uh, I have to take exceptional care of that machine and use it for... Uh, important things. But I have a machine um, I use a lot of late uh, that is worn, and it, this is the Axelson here, uh, 14 by 30, but it's actually uh, 16 and 3 quarters by 36 inch, because you can uh, overhang the uh, tailstock Four inches, <laughs> but <laughs> a little more than that. But um, I will get into some of the things about using old lathes versus new lathes. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Hey, a fellow mentioned that uh, he worked at a works at a place and uh, was told, well, hey, old Joe, before you could hold close tolerances, <laughs> that can be quite a challenge. And uh, I, I'll show you how uh, most likely old uh, Joe did these things, okay? Now, I've learned a few things from some old timers and stuff. And one guy, uh, name was Bill, and Bill oiled the crap out of lathes. And it, it's not a bad idea. And I'll show you what I mean. So you take an oil can. Now, this lathe here uh, uses uh, hydraulic oil. In, in the apron and it pumps it everywhere. And uh, Vactra is a little uh, thick uh, to work in it, the way this is designed. So this is like uh, AW68, I believe, hydraulic oil. And uh, to compensate for not having uh, like Vactra or Vacuum uh, whey type oils, the tacky stuff, is to use more oil. So that's what we do. And this this old lathe has an oil pump, and um, it normally, you set it and lock it, but I got it so I can adjust it, and it's on full. So I just oiled it like that, and I'm going to run it, forward and I'm going to oil the back here and of course <laughs> this this machine's got uh, these way wipers uh, have brass scrapers and springs and felt and those need oil too and I oiled them when I oiled the machine, but I do this. I just thought I'd point that out. Then, run it back. And it just, look at this. See that? This is an 80-year-old Axelson. Well, it wasn't doing that a minute ago. Okay, I, you can start feeling it getting tight back here, okay? Now, there's another thing about a lathe like this is the length of this carriage. 
uh, 26 inches and it's longer than you can actually turn. Okay, now notice it's all the way back here. Notice where the tool post is, okay? In relationship, see? You have to do something to get back here. Okay. But then, okay, let's go all the way forward. It's a little bit tight right in there. Okay, here's where it's getting loose. See? Okay. Now you got to feel this. It's starting to get tight right here. Now, here's where the machine will cause problems is where it starts climbing up on the unworn part up by the chuck here. You start feeling it getting tight right in there, see? So, to get the optimal accuracy, you're going to have to fudge it in. And I'll show you how you do that. The KDK works real good because it's offset. So we're still in the sweet spot. So you see what I did here? I got this tool, this small tool post, on this plate. And I can slide it over. Got a cutoff tool. Look at that. See what I did? Keeping the lathe, <clears throat> excuse me, in the, in the smooth part here. There, yeah, see, it's starting to get tight. Okay. Now, a lot of the attachments I have are more extended than this. So that helps, you know, you can see how far that is. But I can hold stuff within a half thousandths if I'm not climbing up. Okay, see that? That's how old Joe did it. But I think a good part of it is um, having it oil it. Good, that's important. Okay, now there's this adjustment on some lathes, not all. And that's front way gibbs. And on the axelson here, it's right here. You see that screw? Yeah, get down in there, let the camera get used to it. Then there's this block. And those really aren't needed for most work because uh, that's for like running the machine in reverse and taking a heavy cut and keep this heavy carriage from lifting. So the first thing to do on a machine if you're having problems is loosen these. And there's one on both sides, uh, one under the travadile here. And those are loose and not contacting because they don't need to be. And they don't need to be on the Monarch 10 E either. Let's go over and have a look at that. Okay. Instead of um, uh, sliding metal, I had to have a drink of coffee there. It's got ball bearings here, just regular ball bearings, hard to see. And they're adjusted right here. And you don't want those things really in contact either. You want to be able, like, I can move it no matter where the uh, carriage is. You don't want this getting tight. And if these things get worn, and they're tightened up at the loose spot, it'll actually bust the bearing when you get, <laughs> get it climbing up. Now see, this machine has no wear on the waist to, to speak of. They're still within specs. 
but you still have to make it work. It's just not going to do it itself. There's a whole bunch of variables, like stuff flying out of it. <laughs> That's another story. So you want to back that off too. Both of them up front if the machine has them. Now all the machines have uh, a gib here. Now this is an interesting one on an Axelson because it's tapered and it's kind of touchy. But you want to make sure it does not get tight either. Okay. You, I, I, I guess what I'm saying is loosen all the gibs. Then find where the carriage still gets tight. And then adjust the, <clears throat> the gibs kind of accordingly. And you'll get the best, uh, <laughs> it's, it's all a compromise for sure, but everything generally is. But this machine here, this axle in is typical of what I want to do with the rest of this machine shop is find nice old things like this and make them, uh, run real good, you know, even though they, they're old and have flaws. I've used the Monarch uh, lathe over there to uh, uh, make a lot of parts in the cross-feed clutch and other small things on the machine here. And uh, now it's a working machine. And, uh, but it's got its, you know, it's got its uh, little faults there. And uh, it doesn't, because of the problem of uh, climbing up on the unworn spot here, uh, <laughs> right about this point here, as far as the carriage can go, you can see how much further it can go. The stop here can be removed. So when you get back to here, Let's see where it starts getting tight there. That's still feeling pretty good. Let me see. They use the machine quite a bit back here. They turn tapers. But it still gets a little bit tight. You want to be sure and have it uh, oiled like it is there. And right in, right in there. And uh, I don't have a tape handy. But that's about 18 inches, I think. So I could turn an 18 inch length, uh, you know, better than a thousandths uh, taper, you know. And that's only a portion of uh, <laughs> the actual capacity. So I'm losing, yeah, quite a bit of capacity that way from where, but keeping the machine onto what the old guys call the sweet spots, uh, you can make this work. So that's a start and uh, milling machines, luckily, this machine here, no can drug out into the weather for a couple of years or so. And it doesn't have bad wear to it. The table doesn't get tight. It, it, it's just totally amazing. I've never, uh, well, I did. I had a brand new bridge port and uh, this, <laughs> that was back in uh, 1981. And uh, it was like this, kind of an amazing uh, stroke of luck. I just feel very lucky to um, have a horizontal mill like this. But it's an interesting one. It does. It has weird speeds, and plus it's got a silent chain drive that weighs. Uh, I don't know, more than a hundred pounds. So this got five horsepower and that it's got torque. Okay. So these other machines really uh, enhance things. And uh, what I am to do is just uh, find interesting things that I can fix that are broken for dirt cheap, fix them and maybe sell them, 
you know that's that's my plan anyway and then plus I got my woodworking and if you get in the work working and stuff it's amazing how <laughs> having this equipment here what you can do with the woodworking machines okay you guys have a good morning <laughs>